In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, we answer a lot of fitness and health questions that are asked by viewers and listeners just like you. But the way we open the episode is with a 40-minute introductory portion. This is where we talk about current events. Uh, we talked about our forum today. We talk about supplements or health studies. So what I'm going to do is give you a whole breakdown of today's episode. If you just want the fitness stuff where we answer the questions, that happens about 40 minutes in uh, to the episode. So here's the breakdown. We open up by talking about our new MAPS program coming out, MAPS Suspension. Da, now, da, da, da. This is a suspension, a, a whole program based off of suspension trainer. So you don't need any equipment but that, and you can do it anywhere, of course, outdoors, in your house, hang it in the doorway, uh, whatever, full body workout. Now, this program is being released only to our private forum as of the releasing of this episode on Tuesday. Thursday, it becomes live to the public. However, if you'd like to get early access, we're offering a forum discount. In other words, you can get into our private forum for $75 or $75 and 75% off the normal price. So you're going to pay $25 bucks for a year access into our private forum. All you got to do is go to mapsfitnessproducts.com, type in this code 75 off. So that's 75 O F F for that discount, and then you'll get the discount on the MAP suspension program and other programs we may release. Then we talked about Mike Tyson. Believe it or not, that guy's been vegan for 10 years. Blew me away. Yeah. Uh, then we I talked- I was going to do the impression. Huh? No, no. Then we talked all Wait, about- you children. Mike Tyson uh, taking potentially protein powders, animal protein versus plant protein. That got us talking about plant protein powders that are good. They typically are a mix of different plant sources- now, our favorite vegan protein powder is from Organifi. Organifi is a supplement company that has all organic supplements. They have protein powders. They have green juices, red juices, gold juices, and other products. If you want to get the Mind Pump discount, here's what you got to do. Go to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump for 20% off. Then we talked about how Ancestry.com sold to Blackstone Investment Group, uh, and we talked about eh, what that could possibly look like. Yeah, no shenanigans, I, 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 I imagine. <laughs> then we talked about, easy for you to say, uh, yeah. Twitter ah, 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 ah. <laughs> potentially buying TikTok. I talked about my Wagyu uh, steak experience. That stuff is amazing. Why did you bring it up? Then we talked about distance learning for our kids and some strategies that we have for them. One strategy, of course, is to have them wear blue light blocking glasses since they're going to be on their screens so much and it'll protect their eyes from the potential ravages of blue light from their computer screens. Now, a company that we really that we work with that makes the best, in our opinion, blue light blocking glasses is Felix Grey. Now, here's one of the reasons why we like Felix Grey glasses. They're stylish and the glasses don't change the color of everything. So a lot of blue light blocking glasses are orange or red. These ones still are clear. They're still clear but they still block a great deal of the potentially damaging blue light rays coming from uh, electronic devices. So if you want to get the Mind Pump hook out, hookup, check them out. Go to felixgrayglasses.com. That's F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses.com forward slash Mind Pump. Um, and you'll get free shipping and free returns. Then we got into the fitness questions. Here's the first one. This person says, look, I know you guys aren't super big fans of wrist wraps, what about lifting chalk? So we talk about all about lifting chalk in that part of the episode. Next question. This person is asking about cold exposure therapy that includes ice baths and cold showers. And shrinkage. So we talk all about the benefits uh, of cold therapy in that part of the episode. The third question. This person is a trainer, so they're asking a trainer question. They want to know how, they, how to know when to push a client based off of their physical exhaustion or their mental exhaustion? Like, how do you know? And the final question, this person just wants to know what our favorite body weights have been and why. So it's a personal one. Dick. Uh, also, all month long, MAPS performance is 50% off. So this is a full workout program that incorporates athletic movements with traditional resistance training. So you build muscle, burn body fat, speed up your metabolism, but you also gain great functional movement and mobility. Now, this program also includes a free modification, so you can follow the entire program with just a pair of dumbbells. So that's all you need. You can work out at home, 
follow the whole program. If you have gym access or you have a full gym at home, then you can follow the program that was as it was originally written out. So no excuses. A great program. It has some of the best reviews of all of our MAPS programs. Again, 50% off. Here's how you get that discount. Go to mapsgreen.com. That's M-A-P-S-G-R-E-E-N.com. Use the code GREEN50. That's G-R-E-E-N-5-0, no space, for the discount. And it's t-shirt time. Oh, shit, Doug. You know it's my favorite time of the week. Yes, it is. Yeah. We have three winners for Apple Podcasts. We have one winner for Facebook. The winners for Apple Podcasts are Deck Tagging, J Duran 12, Who's the Man 23. And for Facebook, we have Nicole Kostiak. All of your winners send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Include your shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. I told you guys about that one time I made a, a bad joke. That one time at band camp? No, not You've that. You've never too. done that. Yeah. I remember no, what, no. They're I, always good. Remember what you did with that flute? Yep. <laughs> it was, What'd yeah. you do with the flute? I could play and talk at the same. <laughs> oh. So, uh, no, the time I made a joke to a priest. Did I tell you guys about this? What? <laughs> and, I, and it did not go over well. Oh, did you know? That's you, like Adam pantsing his pastor. Yeah, uh, I was trying to. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. Did you know? That. Did you know he was a priest when you did it? Yeah, no, I was. I, I, I was. I thought I was being clever, and I. I thought he'd laugh. So you so know, like a rabbi joke. No, the, the old, the old <laughs> a rabbi and a priest walk into a bar. Yeah, right? no, yeah. no, no, stay with me. No, he was. Uh, so my studio used to be next to when I had the wellness facility. It used to be next to a coffee shop. And they had a bench outside where people could wait. And Saturday mornings, they used to get real busy. So people would be sitting on the bench waiting to get seated. And so he's just, it was a priest just sitting there. And you know, he wasn't doing anything. He was just chilling, waiting for his turn to go eat breakfast. And I was training my client. And <laughs> we opened the doors, you know, because it was hot or whatever. And so I'm like, hey. It's like hell in here. No, no. That's not, that's, <laughs> it's an inferno. Yeah. No, I said, hey. He looks up and I'm like, you and I got something in common. And he goes, what? And I said, we both exercise people. <laughs> wow. Si- silence. Nothing? <laughs> no, dude. He looked at me like th- just to stare. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, He's wow. like, demons are real. I yeah, thought, yeah. It was, I thought he was going to chuckle. <laughs> joke about that. Yeah, yeah. I thought he was going to laugh like, ah, you know, funny one, you know, fist bump. Like, right, oh, I got right, some right. points. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got some points. That's pretty clever. I mean, no, dude. Come on. He dude. looked at me like, and I was like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. That's Miss. gonna go on my record. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's gonna go on my record. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna be at the yeah. gates, you know? Yeah. Oh, uh, real quick, let's pull up your record real quick. Right. Here's a joke you made. Yeah. Is that funny? Did you think that was funny? <laughs> really? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, anyway, oh man. Did you yeah. guys see on the forum the uh the, the hubbub that got started? Oh the so, hi- oh, the, all the hype around the uh, the new program. Yeah, coming? so I had told the forum or we you know we I love the anticipation. Yeah, so we told the forum uh that we're coming out. We're going to about to release a new MAPS program. So people were like so excited, and then they're trying to guess what, what the program is, but some of them are funny. You want to hear my favorite one? Let me hear it. Oh. It's MAPS Apocalypse 2020. <laughs> it's MAPS a, Apocalypse. Yeah, it's trained like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> I was you guys send that to the marketing team right yeah, there. Oh. It's like, just we're going to do your workout till you die because there is no tomorrow. <laughs> so I put it like MAPS naps because it's something we mentioned a while, <laughs> yeah. a couple episodes ago. Hilarious. Yeah. But um, but no, uh, all joking aside, they are uh, very excited. And uh, I guess we could talk about it. Right I'm here. excited. We This has been, it's been over a year. Has it been a year, Doug? Yeah, about a year. It's been a year since we released a program. This is, I think, one of the longest stints we've gone without releasing a program, isn't mm-hmm. it? It yeah. is. And in this one, really, we we came out with to meet, uh, we uh, see a strong demand, Yeah, which is another super effective uh, MAPS program that requires no uh, gym equipment. So this is, a, this is a, a pure suspension trainer workout program. Everything com- complete, like... Mm-hmm. Upper body, lower body, core, phased, reps, sets, the whole deal. Um, so that's what we finished, and it's going to be out to the forum first. I should say that now. Mm-hmm. So we don't release it to the public until later. What's the deal with the date is? for it's on Thursday. Thursday. Okay, no. so, so this episode drops Tuesday. That forum will get first uh, crack at it, and then, of course, they get now, there. Now, that being said, something that we've talked about for a while, first of all, we don't talk about uh, the forum like we used to when we first started. When we first started, it was uh, <laughs> we talk about almost every other week about the community and how it's been growing and what it's like in there. 
But for a newer audience, if you've been listening to us for less than a year, you know, the forum is, in my opinion, one of the most valuable things uh, that we offer. Aside from the four of us being in there and helping and supporting the community, uh, we've collected some of the brightest minds in our space. So there's there's all kinds of doctors and nurse and physical therapists and all a lot kinds, of trainers, a lot of trainers, a lot yeah. of brilliant minds in there, and just advanced people that have been lifting for a long time, people that have gone through every single program. So it's such an incredible resource for people to use when they're going through any of the programs, or if they need they need help and assistance with programming themselves, or they need assistance with putting together a, a nutrition plan for them. I mean, that thing is just full of all kinds of, of great valuable There's also content. fun conversations that happen in there. You know, people oh, yeah. share memes and, you know, and debate things. And yeah, it's a, it's a somewhat of an extension of kind of like the, our intros here, I, I would say. Yeah, totally. So, But the forum gets always gets first crack. Um, at new release uh, programs, and then they do get uh, a discount. Uh, although the program will be released at discount because it's a new launch, uh, the forum gets an additional discount. It's they always do. Yeah, they, they all the always. forum always gets a little bit better deal than everybody, no matter what. Even if it's a launch and a sale that we have going on, so it's you know if you're somebody who has multiple programs, the it, get, it pays for itself just to be in there for the discounts that you get on all the programs. Yeah. So uh, because we're talking about it on the podcast, I think it's fair to say that, to offer forum access uh, at a really really discounted price. So people, if they, if you want to mm. get in on the forum, um, and then also get discounts on on new release programs like Map Suspension. Mm. Uh, it's. I heard be, there's a pretty handsome model in this one too. So in this program, yeah, uh, in this program, <laughs> it's just, you know, it, which is you know, just we decided to do that to really up the value. Yeah, he's 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 burly. <laughs> and uh, he's got some massive cakes. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I heard. Yeah. He's, and handsome and yeah. a really good mobility. Watch yeah, this rugged. program. This, if this program sells more than any other program, dude, I don't know. We're, we might have to pull all the other models out and replace well, with Justin going I'm forward. I'm saying, yeah. Well, you, here's the thing. You guys support me specifically. You know, I would like to see that. Yeah, I want to ask, before I ask you guys, I want to know what your experience is with working with suspension trainers. I know that was a later addition mm. to the fitness market. You know, most of my career, I trained clients and suspension trainers weren't really a thing. They weren't introduced until yeah. a little later. So I I had mentioned that I had spent a year pretty much going body weight specifically and only. Uh, and at the time, this is like right when suspension trainers were kind of coming out and they weren't even allowed in a lot of gyms because gym owners thought like, well, if my equipment, my squat rack or anything isn't anchored down to the floor or bolted down, like this is a, this is a liability. And so I used to get in trouble using it with my clients like uh, all over the place. But uh, it was such a beneficial tool for me because I could also bring it to people's houses, go outside with it, use it over like, uh, you know, trees and, uh, you know, it was very versatile, but the moves that you could, you could do with it were like really intense and, and very, very effective. So I, I, I totally, uh, uh, had a lot of benefit from using it. I wish that we had already launched this because I'm, I'd say somewhere between like 10 to 15 people already that are trainers that I've suggested this to. This is how I used it, and it was really popular back when I was running boot camps, mm -hmm. is you can now get some of these suspension trainers for very reasonable, which, by the way, we're going to carry them ourselves for a really good deal. And I would buy them for enough boot campers, and then I would run an entire boot camp centered around that. Mm -hmm. So I've been telling a lot of trainers that have been looking for pivots, like, hey, I can't train indoors. Our gym's closed down. I've been thinking about running a boot camp. What would you do? What are some model ideas? And using the suspension trainer is an incredible way to run boot camps outside. Because you could, like you said, Justin, you could up to a – I mean, I remember we used to do the – uh, the field goal uh, post at, oh, right. on a on a football field or tie to trees like it's really really easy to strap it almost on anything and you can get an incredible full body workout. Yeah, so I so I didn't have a whole lot of experience um, with suspension trainers. Then I had a trainer work for me um, in the later part of my career who was really big in them, and I without much experience thought, oh, this this looks like a it doesn't look like you can really make a workout that intense or create enough resistance. One of the challenges with body weight or equipment free exercises creating enough resistance for certain exercises that is so not true with suspension trainers oh. uh and, and isolation exercises you could do with it as well 
which can be hard sometimes with uh, like other you know modalities. You, or whatever. Yeah, you really learn about how to manipulate leverage and and uh, you know a lot of these exercises you can make really really intense, or you can actually pull off and, and kind of move away from the anchor and make it way less intense, or vice versa, depending on what exercise you're doing. So there's actually some exercises that I prefer that I prefer using suspension trainers for, and some of them are silly. Like I like you think they're silly. I love doing bicep curls with a suspension trainer. Mm -hmm. I really like pulling my body forward with my biceps rather than just moving my hands. Mm -hmm. Totally, totally different feel. Um, and of course, you know, when I adjust my body weight to make it harder or easier, it's almost like getting a little bit of the benefit of a chin up. Uh, but with, uh, you know, just for my biceps. Well, that's the other part of it that's really great is that it's really easy to regress or progress a movement just by where you angle Super it. easy. Yeah. Right, just by you stepping away from uh, the suspension training further, you can make it more challenging. Stepping closer, you can make it easier or, or vice versa. So I think re uh, regressing movements or progressing them, I think it's great. So talking more to the professional, right? So this is something that I've suggested and I'll suggest it on the podcast since I get a lot of DMs about uh, business and, and fitness people that are trying to think of other ways. I, the way I would do this is I would purchase X amount of suspension trainers myself. So I have them as, as a trainer and as a coach. And then the length of our program, I would sell a camp like that. So I would sell it for X amount of weeks for a specific price. And that reserves that person for that suspension trainer for the entire time of that camp. Mm -hmm. A great way to model it that way versus kind of your traditional boot camp with Monday, Tuesday, or Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or whatever for a, a extended period of time or indefinitely. Mm -hmm. Instead of doing it like that, I would run the suspension trainer camps for the allotted amount of time that the actual program lasts and make that the price for uh, you know the person to come in for the entire thing. And that would include, and I would as a, as a coach, I would wrap in whatever it cost me for the suspension trainer and my time for that a lot of time to, to price it outright. Well, totally. Well, mm -hmm. Doug just put up what, what he wants to offer for the forum. So if Damn, you want to- 75% off, Doug? That's it. Somebody's yeah, so, in a giving mood. Yeah. So mm. uh, if you want to get Open access, the you want to get access to the forum. So what is that price then, Doug? What does that come out it's about to? About twenty five bucks. Twenty five bucks, you get a year access uh, to the forum. Uh, so it's normally uh, almost a hundred dollars. So there you go. And then if you're in the forum, um, you're you get uh, discounts on launches. So map suspension, for example, is going to be lower for the forum. Uh, Which almost else. pays for the forum price in itself just by doing that. So if you were even yeah. thinking about getting the suspension trainer, it's kind of a no-brainer to right, do that. Right, right, right. Hey, yeah. I wanted to ask you guys something. Uh, so do you guys know of any like vegans that are famous that are that are badasses? Like Arnold? Uh, now, well, is, he, no, is he vegan? No, you can't put him in that. Just for game changers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He said plant based. It's like the next day after it, it came out, he's got all this like uh, biggest ribeye. Yeah, all this meat <laughs> in his fridge. I got somebody that you'll never guess. Who? Y you'll never guess who, who this person because this person is terrifying, and they're totally against the stereotype of. Now I look. I know that well, I know a lot of endurance athletes, but I wouldn't necessarily call them badass. Yeah, well, I you mean, they are, but in, I mean, in you, their sport. Yeah, if it's a good diet for you, you could still do just as well as anybody else. So I know that, but there's always that stereotype, right? Yeah. Where Mike Tyson. No, he's not. What? He's been, he's been vegan vegan for ten years. What? Yes. Wow. He's been I vegan. For did not know that. Doug, fact check that. That's not real, is it? He, he, for ten years, he's been vegan. How is how has that not been all over the the, the vegan propaganda? Oh, I can't yeah. believe we haven't seen. How that. How do they not pull him in? Game changers. You're not gonna you add Iron Mike. Yeah, you know to the mix. You know what's funny about this? Remember, I don't remember who was he that he was boxing where he's like talking shit to him, said he was gonna eat his kids. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm gonna eat your yeah. children. Pregnable, and I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I want to eat his children. Praise be to Allah. Are you saying now, Mike? Mike? Yeah. <laughs> See, look at this. Mike Tyson has been vegan since 2010. What? Yeah. I did not know that. I no idea. Yeah. I, I had no idea. I well, looked it up. Children aren't vegan, right? <laughs> the, I know what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. Evander Holyfield's ear. <laughs> yeah, that's was, not vegan. Yeah, yeah. 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 he hasn't, been, day, he he hasn't was, been very consistent. He's a little bit of a carnivore back Yeah, then. yeah. yeah. You know what I'm, uh, I'm calling bullshit. Yeah. And I mean, he's, uh, he's, he's terrifying. I, I watched the videos of him training. Isn't he supposed to fight? Yeah, so Roy, Roy Jones Jr. Yeah, so they're, they're planning on, I don't know when that's coming out. I think it's soon. Uh, but, uh, I mean, come on, dude. They, well, they weren't even in the same weight class. No. 
Yeah, yeah, they weren't, they weren't like, even in the same weight class. So was this going to be that catch weight? What's the deal? Did, so did you ever watch Roy Jones Jr. Yeah. fight? Uh, I thought he was supposed to fight he, he Holyfield. Was, so he was my second favorite fighter. So when I was watching bo- boxing was during his time and Mike Tyson's time. They were yeah. some of the, the most awesome oh. fighters to watch fight. And you know he be, moved like Ali a little bit. He was like real like. Quick. Oh yeah, Roy Jones Jr. was was a was a badass for sure. But I that fight and now, yeah. I mean. He, I'm assuming he must be a lot heavier and carrying himself kind of out of shape. I don't know about that. I think they both are. I thought he was like a welterweight, wasn't he? A welterweight or a little heavier? Yeah. Did he fight light he was, heavyweight? Definitely wasn't. No, he didn't. I don't think he he fought light heavyweight. Well, well he, so he's fifty one right now. So I just looked up his age. How old's Tyson? Is he is he also around that same he's age? In his fifties. So you guys, 50s. you see what's happening, right? Which, by the way, I'm going to circle back to the debate you had with me, like four or five months oh, ago. Oh, so this doesn't count, bro. It's yes, Tyson. It's Tyson, does. bro. Yes, it does <laughs> count. <laughs> this is just showing you. Yeah, because you know who else is on that card? Is, yes. Uh, uh, what, what's his face? The YouTube star guy. Oh, yeah, Logan Paul. Logan Paul's brother. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, Jake Paul. Really. Yes. Yeah. That's it's. It, there's another one too. I, I don't even. I don't even pay attention it's to all some, of them. But every time I see one come up, I'm like, I always. Oh, I gotta say something to Sal about this. He's fighting some NFL player. Yes. Which is like I'm. I'm just. Like this is face the, palming this whole. This thing. is the thing now because these guys have so much pull on their social. They, they just got, know people will watch. Yeah, they've got millions of people, and the the truth is there ain't shit on television right now, especially sports wise. Yeah. And so people are taking advantage of it. And what I think you're seeing with Tyson and these guys, these guys are all going. Look at this. These no name people or no name boxers are making getting paid all kinds of money to box. Why the hell aren't we still doing so it? We, it's a money grab. And we only get one taste. So we we got that one video of Tyson on Instagram like training where he had like some snaps still in him and we're like, "Woo!" <laughs> But in terms of like being able to move like that for a long period of time, dude, I don't know. Well, man. one round, bro. Yeah, one round. Here's the thing you don't want to see. This is the problem with old fighters is you don't want to see them get knocked out really bad. Right. That makes people no, feel- you don't want to see that. It does. It makes you feel really bad when you see an older guy. But here's the thing. I, this is the saying in boxing, and I've seen it in person. The last thing for a, a boxer loses is power. They keep their power for a long ass time. Yeah, well, I, what about Foreman? For, when did he? He was forty. He, he came four back or uh, yeah. forty six when he was. I mean, he was bigger and heavier, but he he put the hurt on it. Dude, I've seen. I, I there's a there's a video of a uh, a man who was seventy who was just putting the hurt on some twenty year old kid. Yeah, because you don't lose your you don't lose your he power. Don't lose the power, yeah. But you got you know Roy Jones. So so considering that right that yeah. they still are hit hard. Okay. You got Tyson against Roy, Roy jo- Jones Jr. Mm-hmm. And if they make some clean shots, are people going to want to see that? Mm. You know what I mean? That could be nasty. Yeah, how scary is that when a 51 year old gets knocked out? It's uh, it doesn't uh, and hard. You know right? what I mean? It might get hard, hit hard, pretty pretty damn hard. So Ty- I'm still like I can't believe. It. So Tyson's been vegan for what 10 years? <laughs> you go you back said? to the vegan. I'm like, thing. Come on, dude. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Not but if he t- eats ears, bro, and children. There's that does, not, that does not count. <laughs> Remember when he was? Uh, now, do you guys know his history? When he was younger and he used to raise uh, pigeons. Yeah. You guys know this about him? No, mm-hmm. tell me. So he used to raise pigeons. Uh, this is when he was a really young boxer. Uh, maybe even before or during the time he trained with uh, what's his name Amato? What's his name? Can't remember his name. Anyway, uh, he used to have pigeons as pets. That was like a thing for him. So he's always loved animals. I'm surprised there hasn't been like a a vegan like protein company that hasn't jumped on him right away. Yeah. I, you would oh, think I having know. a big name or like he that. owns it, you know, because like right. I mean, he got into the uh, the weed business for sure. Like yeah. so, he's oh, big, yeah. yeah, in in the marijuana space. But yeah, you'd think so. If I mean, he, he's such a uh, you know a, a big celebrity to to endorse something like that. I actually got in a conversation uh, with somebody over vegan protein versus um, or plant protein versus animal protein Mm -hmm. because the studies show that on a a gram per gram basis animal protein uh is more effective in other words you'd have to eat more plant protein to equate to the the same amount of uh, you know to equate to the same kind of muscle protein synthesis Mm. and that kind of stuff that you get from less animal protein but if you have a high protein diet it all it's all a wash so this is the discussion i had i said look when they compare the two what they usually are comparing is a single sourced plant protein versus a single sourced animal oh, protein. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. So 
not really fair. Well, I guess it is fair. But well, would you say that's the number one thing that anyone who is shopping for a vegan protein, that that's what they should be looking for? Multiple From so- multiple sources. Yeah, right? you yeah. want to see a blend because what they do is – so here's the problem with vegan proteins is they tend to – be lower in the branched chain amino acids um, and lower in essential amino acids. If they're from a single source. From a single source. Now, some single sources are not bad. Like pea protein's got a decent amino acid profile. But even if you compare pea protein to whey protein or egg protein, it's still, egg and whey are still superior. But if you combine egg protein, uh, excuse me, uh, pea protein with, you know, rice protein and hemp protein and others, mm-hmm. then you start to, they, they can complement each other with the amino acid profile and you get something that is exceptional. Huh. So when it comes to vegan proteins, you, you got to look at the whole story. So then if you do find one that has a blend like that and you compare it to whey, is it like literally splitting hair difference? It starts to get to splitting hairs. Now it might make a difference if your protein intake is low, but if you're following the 0. 0.6, 0. 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight, which is what studies show that your protein intake should be at if you want to maximize you know, muscle growth and that kind of stuff, if you're in that high category, that high protein intake category, then it's, it's splitting here. And here's the other thing too. A lot of people choose vegan proteins for either two reasons. One, because they don't like eating animals. They don't like doing, you know, it's a, it's a moral thing, right? Mm-hmm. It's a morality mm-hmm. thing for them. And the other main reason, same. This is the reason why I use vegan protein powders. I have an intolerance to dairy protein, so whey protein for me messes up my stomach. So I've had it, a lot of people that didn't know that they have have that issue until they actually tried a vegan until protein. They switched over. You yeah. should not be. It's good to experiment, anyways. Well, I, we, I didn't. I didn't. I, and I notice it when I, if I've been using whey a lot or I've had a lot of dairy in my diet, and then I'm also using that. I do notice a little bit of bloat from it and water retention. And so that's how I try and go back and forth between it. I still enjoy my way, but then I always keep a vegan protein powder available so I can kind of go back and forth. Well, it's my way or the highway. Thanks, Justin. Yeah, yeah well, it's um, okay. We make People make jokes in our space about protein farts. Yeah. Like, oh, I eat a lot of protein. Because we have to because it's disgusting. Yeah, therefore, I'm, I'm going to have – in fact, when I was a younger trainer, I thought this was actually a – just a common side effect, and uh, that's how I would. <laughs> that's how I'd gauge my protein intake. It's like, oh, they smell. Like, Ooh, that's too yeah. ripe. Yeah, yeah, I'm eating. Yeah. I'm eating good in that amount yeah. of protein. Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, it doesn't smell. Need to bump up my protein. The perfect amount of must. Yeah, that's actually false. You should not have putrid <laughs> smelling farts. Sulfurous gas. If, if you're getting really, really bad smelling farts from your protein powder, you have an intolerance. It's not because you're having yeah. protein. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's a, that's a, Listen up, bros. Yeah, it's a, it's yeah. a totally false uh, uh, you know, thing. Did like, you guys hear about Ancestry.com uh, getting purchased by Blackstone Investment Group? What? Yeah. Wait a minute. Hold on. Blackstone Investment Group. Like, I'm not privy. What are they exactly? Well, it's just they? an investment group. Oh, okay. Yeah. So just, just think about all of that data is now being 100% transferred to an investment company. Oh. Like, like think about that. Everybody's gave their DNA samples. And so like, think about like genetically, like how much information they have, uh, they, they just sold off. So what's your, so what's your theory? Do you think that they're doing that to use it to sell to them? They can do whatever they want with it. It's theirs. They just purchased it. I know, but what's the, what's the theory? Why would you go buy something like that? If you're Blackstone Investment Group, why would you go get it paid? Uh, probably a uh, uh, well. Let's think about that. Yeah. Uh, uh, what What are some scenarios you think they could okay, use? Here's one. Now I don't know how legal it is or how people who signed up for Ancestry, if they signed a waiver that said that this is allowed. But let's say it is, right? For, for I would think argument so. Sake, or right? why would you buy it? Right. Well, what I mean is uh, maybe they could sell the DNA to life insurance companies, medical insurance companies. Ah. Think about it that way, right? Yep. So if you're a medical insurance company and you're going to cover somebody and you look at their DNA and you see, oh, predisposed for this, predisposed for that, you're going to pay a higher rate. You know, but what do you mean? I have never had a heart attack. Actually, your DNA says that you have uh, high risk. Or like a pharmaceutical company yes. who has the answer thinking. for some of their issues, right? So mm-hmm. th- that I could now that makes sense to me now, right? If you have their DNA and you could see what's going on with them, and you could sell to a pharmaceutical company who could direct market right to and them. And it's, it's to me, it's kind of a workaround too because of all the the regulations. Like we were talking about with Google, even in Fitbit, where they get into like an issue with uh, digital health data that they're you know they have at their disposal. So this is like. Like, you know, you could trace back all kinds of things genetically. Now, this. again, where do you guys stand on this? 
Is it is it a thing you do, are you feel like I you're mean, infringing? If people the, were unaware that that their stuff was going to get right. sold off, I have a problem with it. Right, me too. I think if you released it and you said, "Yeah, you can have, do whatever you want, and sell it." Then yeah, okay, but you know fine. that you know how it's this your DNA. you know how this works nowadays. It's like a release, like when Facebook gets you to sign up the first time. If they sold it, right, you better believe that they probably have somewhere in there that they they have the rights to this information now. Yeah. So you probably already gave that up, or else it wouldn't make any sense for them to sell it off to a company like that. If they can't use it, so it's go ahead. User just, beware, right? But, but I just think they need to really like you know expose that ahead of time. But then, and then again, I now I'm playing devil's advocate here because on the other side you have, you know, hey, if I if I had something right, a disease, or I'm battling something, and there's a pharmaceutical drug that's out mm. there that could help me. And I didn't even know about it, and now I'm being marketed Dude, by them. Do the, I not like that? Is about that a problem? Fear, yeah, but think about the fear-based marketing. You imagine that? You uh, get know, an email. Yes. It'll be, hey, Adam Schaefer, we you know so have you access to your soon. DNA. Your chances of getting cancer are actually pretty high. We looked at your DNA. Oh my so God. if you would like to pay for treatment, pre-treatment, or what? Oh, yeah, shit. You're predisposed to this and that and the other. You should probably buy this. Yeah. You know what the problem with that, by the way, is we don't know enough about DNA yet to to even go there, like because you have DNA, but then you have how it's expressed because of lifestyle, or they could clone you. Yeah. Oh well, that's that's, that's such a, a great other thing. What a great movie that <laughs> hey, would be. Yeah. You right? imagine that? Yeah. All your like, they have access like all the DNA there that they start like making other people. Yeah. And just like wait, <laughs> whoa. Yeah. Here goes your conspiracy. Know, know, mind know, going know, right there. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking worst case scenario. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> we need. Yeah. We need to break into so and so's house. How are we going to do that? They got the greatest security. Don't worry. We have a clone. Right. That's just like them. <laughs> 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 You know what I'm saying? Same fingerprint, everything. Yeah. yeah, kill the president, replace it with the clone. Nobody yeah. will ever know. Are you guys staying what? up and up on the uh, social media wars that are going on like usual? You know, so you have, uh, I know that, uh, was it TikTok? No, 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 excuse me. It was. Well, TikTok Snap looked like it was getting banned. So, What's happening with that? Okay, so listen, you have Snapchat who is now releasing uh, advertising, like things like Headspace that you'll start getting mm -hmm. through there. You've got TikTok who was supposed to get banned, now is talking to Twitter. Hmm. So Twitter potentially might buy them. What other social media news have I seen right now? That's uh, what else wow. was the other one? That'd I be see? a big merger. Oh, mm -hmm. huge, huge! If TikTok, but I thought it was originally supposed to be uh, Microsoft. Microsoft. Yeah, some American they were bidding for it. An American company has to buy them before they're. Banned. Oh, that was the other one. Yeah. And Instagram just uh, released Real. Have you guys seen Real? So what's the difference between Real and Insta Story? Well, it's it's quick little. It's supposed to be like TikTok. It's their answer to TikTok. Okay. So do they have dance move stuff embedded it's in it? It's gonna already? have it's gonna okay. have all that. Yeah, it's gonna have little. Oh lord. Yeah, what I are all we're getting rid of that? Yeah, because I was like, all the all those nurses and doctors are like, oh, what am I gonna do? TikTok's gonna be banned. You can go to Instagram now. Now we yeah now we have an answer for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, those some of those are so uh, you know maybe I'm old, but they're cringy. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. If you're over twenty something and you're doing you know TikTok videos, oh, oh great, uh, you're gonna get sucked in by your I daughter rolls. one day and you're gonna feel bad for saying that. No, well I'll mm. do anything for her. Well, yeah. there you go. But you you're not going to see me on there, like, you know, dancing like Maps Aesthetic, Maps Anabolic, <laughs> Dumbbells versus Bones. Well, that is because, you know, it's this is why. Lose weight. This the is right why thing. I think it's hilarious. Yeah. You know, I blame Gary V for this, right? Because Gary V, I feel like, has such an influence on uh, mm. business operators <laughs> you know, today. And so he says something like, everybody should be yeah. on TikTok because it's the yeah. new platform. And, you know, every 40 year old that's like, fuck, another one I got to keep up with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're and then doing they, the mockery. And then they just start it and they start doing it. I'm going like, off. oh my God, dude. If you, I bet you, you don't get a single sale from that. It's, you might be losing sales. But <laughs> oh, 100%. If you're over 40 and you're doing TikTok, there's a good chance you're losing sales for your business. I'm just going to put it out there. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to okay. counter Gary V's point. Yeah. Anyway. Hey, uh, have you guys ever tried, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Wagyu? Steak? Oh, wagyu? Wagyu? wagyu. wagyu. Is it I wagyu? Wagyu? wagyu, yeah. I thought it's, it was Wagyu, Doug. What is it? Wagyu. Wagyu. Say that again. Wa. Gyu. Is that Japanese? Or? Wagyu, yeah. 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 Expensive beef. beef. So I went, Well, I've had it, but I... So I've never really eaten like a nice cut of it, right? I've sampled it here and there, mm -hmm. but I'm... And now why? Because it's silly. The price is silly. It doesn't make any sense. Like 300 bucks or 200 something dollars for six ounces. It's insane, right? Yeah. So we, I went to yeah. have steak with Jessica over the weekend. We went to uh, Alexander's. You guys ever eat there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's really oh, good. So good. Phenomenal. So they had this special. They come out and they're like, we got this special going on. Six ounces of Japanese imported Wagyu steak for 115 bucks, which is like a killer Boom. deal. So it's the first time I ever... 
Have you ever had? Have you ever tasted this? Meat? I thought we had it at your birthday. It like melts. Did we? Yeah, we had it at your birthday, dude. I was really drunk. Yeah, we oh, had it yeah. at your birthday. That was that, still to this day. I don't know if I can. I can say I've had a better steak than that. That right? was really yeah. Good. You're right. Yeah. That that's what was the name of Vegas? that place? What was it? Uh, Bizarre meat. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, Bizarre okay. meat. Bizarre you, meat. You guys were drunk too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the meat, it literally, it's like it's meat made out of butter. I don't know how to explain it. Now it melts in your face. Remind me. Now mm. is this uh, the age? How old the cow is, or is it they massage the beef? Or I looked, something? I looked it up. Okay, tell me. So <laughs> now I now can massage the cow. Right before no, I'm serious. I think really? they do shit like the, that. Oh no, this is the deal, right? Yes. So like, it's a special. Whoa. By the way, there's only a, I think three thousand of these cows or something like that. It's like a small number from Japan that they have. Mm -hmm. So they, first off, they're a special breed. Mm -hmm. Then they uh, they feed them a special diet that includes beer. So they also feed them beer. Uh -huh. So then they, they give them like the best life. Then they do deep tissue massages. See, uh -huh. I knew it. On uh -huh. these cows in order to encourage marbling. And then here's the part that I think is kind of sad. Yeah. I think they limit their movement because they don't want the muscle to get too developed uh -huh. and tough or whatever. So they rub them down, feed them beer. So then what you get, and I learned this after I ate the meat. Okay, everybody, so calm down. Uh, the <laughs> meat is like marbled like you've never seen before. It's When you look at the meat, you know, normally you look at a piece of steak and there's like some fat and then all red muscle and stuff. It's like a, it's perfectly uniform marbled fat all the way through. Hmm. And then when they cooked it and it comes out and you eat it, it literally melts in your face. It's oh. insane. Six ounces too was very filling because it was so rich. Oh wow! You know what I'm saying? Mm. Amazing stuff. But probably the last time I'll I'll, I'll order. It. I don't know. We'll see. Really? Are you gonna pull? Up? Yeah, because I, I need to learn more about how they they restrict the movement. Oh yeah, look how perfectly marbled that is. Wow! Look at that, dude. Wow! Isn't that insane? Look at that one. Three hundred bucks. Yeah, you get three hundred bucks. You'll get like eight ounce meat for three hundred bucks. Can you imagine? What that? cut did you have? Mm. Did you have a ribeye or did you have a fillet? What you have? I don't know what the hell it was. It you was don't just, even know what it was. It was just wagyu. <laughs> <It's just, it's laughs> hell wagyu. Yeah, I just got some for wagyu. You. Yeah. Anyway, dude, um, uh, I got some notice from my kid's school that oh, they. Yeah. What's going on, you guys? Are they are they going to be out this <sighs> okay, year? Okay. So here's the deal. <sighs> so far, they're we know that they're out until there's certain criteria. I guess that the the governor came up with in here in California. But they also He's are been doing asking. A great job. They're, yeah, phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Governor Newsom's crushing. He's my guy. He's, He's my the guy. guy. They also asked us if we would be okay with uh, distance learning for the whole year. Mm. I know, dude. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about that. I talked to some other parents and we were discussing, like, you know, what we're going to do because I said, you know, I understand the whole risk of uh, of COVID, which although COVID's risk seems to be extremely low for children, the fear is that they'll spread it to other people. Right. So, okay, I understand that, whatever. But we also need to consider the, the other health issues this may cause kids during very developmental years. I mean, their brains are developing, and a big part of the brain's development is has to do with social interaction. Mm -hmm. w what kind of effects are we going to see? And we're not going to know this for years, by the way. No one's going to know for years. What are we going to see later on in terms of, you know, if kids had a year or two years with minimal social I interaction? I wonder how much, because I, I feel like we've already been conditioning in this direction. When you look at the way kids use social media now, and remember when- it Yeah, went, but this is extreme. Dude. I know, I know. But I feel like we're already conditioning them in that direction anyways. Remember when uh, Enzo first started working for us like, like two years ago or whatever? Yeah. And he told me, he shared that story with me about how you would talk to a girl at a party. Like that was just wild. Yeah, first to, ask her for a, yeah, or you're trying to follow her on like social alien media. To yeah, us. yeah. She'd be across the house. You, you, you see her. I want to go talk to her. But before you go do that, the first thing you do is you friend request request her on Facebook. If she then accepts it, then you can then say something to her. If she responds to that, then you go over and you walk or and Instagram talk to or something. Like that. Right, right. So I mean, the, these kids that that are going through school right now, I feel like have been so conditioned for being almost antisocial as it is. Well, so here's the thing though. They still went to school for six to seven hours a day. I know, I know. Yep. We're still in playing recess. Yeah. We're still with kids in the classroom. Constantly talking to each now, other. Yeah, and now, he, look, okay, so Jessica is an adult, right? She's not working. She's at home. She doesn't get the opportunity to go meet, see, at least get to see you guys when we record. 
she's at home all the time and she tell and she likes uh, alone time she, she's one of those people she enjoys that but she tells me how much it affects her mm-hmm. now you're talking about kids who can't really express they might even be aware mm-hmm. that it's affecting them negatively that's what I think I think a lot of kids don't even realize and it's developmental this is de- these are the developmental years for for kids you know my daughter's in she's going to be in fifth grade so half of fourth grade and now let's say potentially all of fifth grade n- not being around a lot of kids most of the time i mean we might be able to schedule a play date here and there but that's not the same as being at school every day around you know 30 kids in the classroom and seeing your friends and having conversations and figuring things out with your friends at recess and talking about this kid and, oh, we got to figure out this problem. Let's play four square. Let's do this thing over here. Yeah. Answer questions with the teacher. Have discussions. None of that, right? There's got to be some, uh, some, 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 who knows what the effects are going to be, but I think they're going to be negative. You know? Oh, yeah. No, I'm, I've been talking about this with Courtney a lot uh, as of late, too, because it's like, how do we handle this? And and you're right. There's, there's just a totally different uh, benefit to having them just immersed in with all like kids because they come up with their own, uh, you know, nuanced languages between the two, you know, everybody kind of has their own lingo and, and, uh, can communicate things and, and they're figuring things out together as opposed to just getting everything from mom and dad. And, you know, and then us like trying to figure out how we can then schedule them to to hang out with their their friends, it's it's a struggle. So now now let's say this is what let's say this is what's going to happen, and your kids are not going back to school at all all of next year. What are some of the things that you guys as parents are having conversations around? Are you what are you going to do? Let's say because right now I feel like everyone's hoping the school is going to do something. At sooner or later, you all got to accept that the school ain't going to do shit. Mm-hmm. It's going to be on your on you as a parent to figure this out to make sure these th- this doesn't uh, really negatively affect them long term. Yeah. What are some of the things you guys have talked about potentially doing? So there's like a group of six or seven uh, parents with with kids that are like friends with uh, you know my oldest and then we're trying to co- like uh, collect a, a couple other groups of parents for my youngest and uh, just to see like I mean we're still going to be going off the curriculum that they're providing from the school uh, initially but uh, we're, we're, we're trying to then organize them to you know trade off which parent does the, the teaching uh, you know for that particular uh, day and then like we're going to kind of try and rotate like and, a pod yeah like a pod like yeah. so yeah it's like a like a little micro school that they're all going to hang out and do their thing and then also like we'll have recess where they go you know uh you know do like exercise and sports and things like that a lot of parents are doing that a lot of parents are getting together with like four kids you know five kids and then one parent will watch them while they do the online class together and they still respect the people i've talked to still do the they respect the social distancing or in terms of the six feet apart Kids wear masks. Yeah, still. you can do all that kind of stuff. You can still do that. No I'm gonna, masks I'm going to make sure yeah. that the kids, you know, get to see their friends, you know, on a one-on-one basis, on a weekly basis. Like, really make it an effort. Otherwise, they're going to be at home all day long. I do make sure that my kids go on two walks a day. I take them in the in the garage. I train them, and because they're on screens way more than they were before, uh, blue light. You know, blocking glasses mm-hmm. because that can yeah. be damaging to the eyes. So, uh, you know, I got my same. My, got my daughter a pair. Got my son a pair. This is what you're going to wear while you're doing the class. They are also. I'm going to have. I'm going to treat it a little bit more formally. So, like last year, it was like my son was on his bed, you know, doing the school thing. I'm going to have a desk. They're going to wear and like they're going to school, but they're going to do it there just to create a little bit more mm-hmm. structure or normalcy. I guess around it. Well, and it's smart too. And what and what's cool is uh, y- there's a little bit more flexibility with it because there's certain subjects that like my kids like just blaze through. It comes super easy and natural to them. And so to spend that like extra amount of time on those things doesn't make sense. It's like they get the work done, cool, move on. You, you spend the most time on the difficult ones for them. And yeah. so it'll be great to kind of you know hone in on what those things are and really like help them. Well, I, I feel like the most important part is actually and you alluded to it, but then I feel like I, neither one of you really addressed the answer to it is the the play, the interactive play together. Because, I mean, sitting in a classroom with a teacher versus sitting at home watching it, yeah, a little bit of a difference, the interaction of raising your hand and answering questions. But, 
I don't feel like that's where the I feel like the huge miss is what happens when no teachers are involved and kids have to interact with each other on a playground and decide, you know, who they're going to pick first, yeah. who what, what games they're going to play, You're right. like organizing each other. Like yeah. to me that is the part organized that activities is going to be the most challenging and maybe the most detrimental if we don't find a way to address that. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm making that a priority 100%. And you know, kids are outside, so I think other parents are not as afraid about, you know, yeah. trans Transmitting any potential COVID or whatever, you keep the group small, four or five kids. And uh, I'll tell you what: if you're a trainer and you're looking for work right now, yeah. I guarantee oh. you, there's perfect a huge, opportunity. To huge, jump in there. Huge market. I get one. Look at what Justin just said about the pods is also what I've been experiencing. And I guarantee you, parents all over the country are doing this. And I guarantee you that you, if you have four or five kids meeting together for a pod, mm -hmm. that they would be more than happy to spend $80 an hour for a trainer to come and take the kids through an hour yeah. of recess or, or exercise or fun stuff or whatever. That's not 80 bucks divided by five parents is nothing. I guarantee you'll find tons of work that way. Yeah, and then add to it. Like uh, I, my, my dad like went through the whole process of uh, uh, you, you know getting qualified and certified to be a, a woodshop teacher and like a skills uh, you, you know teacher. And so I'm actually using him in, in some of these pods to then teach these kids like uh, age approach appropriate projects. So uh, they're also like learning and developing a skill set with their hands on top of, you know, the education part of it. So it's an opportunity I see to, to get more creative and, and invest more time into like real specifics that your kids may be interested in. That's a cool idea right there. Yeah. Like what, so let's play this game for a minute here. Cause let's pretend I'm the trainer who's out of work right now. I'm targeting you guys as parents. Like, what would you like to, like I, the thing that comes to mind based on what you just said, Justin, and what you're saying, Sal is like, I would present to you guys like this, you know, hour with me, like either every day or three days a week. And maybe one day is like fitness focus. Maybe one day is a project. Maybe I'm building a sandbox one day or yeah. like, like doing something. Because yeah, like, you're using math. It's like applied math. So right? I, I had like, a, what would you like to see from me as a trainer to to implement besides oh, oh. just play fitness games? You're, you're not going to have them do squats and push ups and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, no kids going to like that. Fitness games, so like relays, relays, tag, steal the bacon, uh, you know, uh, just different types of games. You know, there's light, one green light, yeah. yeah, you know, balance on one foot. Who could pick up the most flags before the other foot goes down? You get a prize, like just fitness games that get the kids to play and be active. That's the that's the most effective because it's hard to keep a kid's attention for an hour if you're like, all right, ten push ups, all right, you know. Yeah, after yeah. after the second or third session, the kids are gonna be like, I don't want to do that. No, anymore. it's got to be fun. It's got to be fun. It's got to be it. inter and that's the point. Is it to be fun and interactive? Just coat pointing and doing ten push ups. Said yeah. I don't think that's really helping them social interact. It would be some. I would want to do something where they're more involved in it, where they have to create or come up with or lead it, and I'm just kind of overseeing. That's it. it. And because you're a trainer and you have a fitness background, you're you're qualified to take the kids through these types of activities. Um, I, I, I would pay, I would have no problem hiring somebody to do something like that. Mm -hmm. All right. Our first question is from Kyle D Thomas. I know you're not fans of wrist straps because of losing the potential grip strengthening. What about chalk liquid or powder? My hands tend to sweat a lot and the chalk helps with that but I don't want to hinder my grip strengthening. Yeah, no, chalk doesn't. Chalk isn't going to hinder your grip strengthening. No. It's it's going to help you actually be more connected uh, to the weights because the weight isn't slipping, especially if you have really slippery, you know, uh, sweaty hands. I remember the first time I used chalk. So obviously growing up in the, in the gym business, all the gyms I worked out in the early days banned chalk. So I, yeah. I actually never had access. So you just everywhere. I never seen them, right? I never seen chalk, did, never really used it, worked out in the gym, um, if my hands would sweat, I'd wear gloves sometimes, and but otherwise I didn't use anything at all. And then I went to a hardcore gym and saw that they actually had community chalk on the workout floor, mm -hmm. and it was chalk on the floor. I loved it. I was like, oh, this is cool. Let me try this. I've never used this before. Used it on my hands, and I had a much better workout. Now, it wasn't – and I use chalk, by the way, if I'm pressing even – so chalk, a lot of times people say, oh, it's to prevent your grip from slipping so you can hold on to more weight when you deadlift or pull heavy, which is true, but it also gives you better connection to the weight, in my opinion, which is why I like to chalk my hands when I do you know, presses or when I do laterals or any movement. It just makes me feel more connected to the way I get the best workouts with it. And I used to have all my clients chalk 
their hands when I would train them, even my elderly clients. Well, I, I want to address too that we're I don't we're not anti wrist straps either. Like uh, I've talked about uh, using them. I think it's just it's being mindful of it, right? It's it's turned into like a a uh, your attire now, right? Like it's a it's like now become a fashion thing where you you, oh, yeah. you wear straps or you wear a belt all the time. Like that's what I think all of us would agree that we're we're anti, right? I think uh, wearing a belt, doing all kinds of you know machine exercises and cable exercises is ridiculous. Or wearing it all the time, even on squatting, like you should you should definitely train yourself to be able to squat and deadlift without a belt too. In fact, you should be able to do that eighty to ninety percent of the time without a belt. It doesn't mean that there isn't a place for you to utilize some of these tools. These tools have value, and there's a lot of different examples where. You can't use them. It's just more about being mindful of not becoming dependent on it. Because in real life, you're never going to be walking around with your your belt strapped around you or wrist straps strapped around you. And that's the point: is to be strong in real life, not just when you go to the gym. And it's for safety reasons to protect yourself. If you can deadlift and you've never deadlifted before without a belt or wrist straps, and then you think you can lift, you know, 400 pounds because you do it in the gym all the time with wrist straps, and then you hurt yourself with 200 pounds because you can't hold on to the grip. Uh, of whatever it is that you're picking up because you you totally misjudged it because you've never mm -hmm. trained without it. Like so for me it's like 80% of the time you're I'm not using tools like this, but 20% of the time to insert it into my training every once in a while, I don't have a problem with either one of those. Yeah, I didn't get exposed to chalk till I was in college and training uh, you didn't know what the strength coach is. And I saw chalk there and, um, I used to use actually wrist straps a lot when I used to, uh, power clean, because that was, you know, something that I saw everybody do. And I thought that was just kind of a part of it, uh, in order to, uh, you know, keep, keep a nice tight grip. But, uh, it, it was very surprising to me what, uh, chalk provided in terms of security of the, of my grip, uh, going, especially barbell training. So if you haven't done chalk with barbell training, it's a completely, uh, different feel where you, you do feel like you have a lot more control of the lift. Yeah, it's, liquid chalk's pretty good too. It's not bad. It's not quite as good as powder, but you're not allowed to use powder chalk. I know, in hardly any gyms. Yeah. yeah, none of them. So, I mean, I work out in my garage. So I can use whatever I want, but when I go to the gym, I would get liquid chalk, and some of them aren't bad. Some of them aren't bad, but it's not quite as good uh, as, as normal chalk. Here's the, th the other thing with wrist straps that you need to consider. Um, like a belt, it changes muscle recruitment patterns. Mm -hmm. it, it does. Studies will show that it changes how the patterns of your muscles work. So it not only prevents your grip potentially from getting as strong as it can, it also changes recruitment patterns so that you get better at lifting with wrist straps and worse at lifting without them. This is not necessarily – this is not a good thing if you want your, your strength to transfer into the real world. So people use wrist straps all the time. Are doing themselves, uh, you know, a big disservice. Well, and I also found after using wrist straps for so long, uh, you know, power cleaning that my wrist got really weak and dependent on uh, just because of the support that it was also providing my wrists yes. uh, with these lifts. And so I had to retrain the way uh, that I was able to catch the bar and, and get my wrists uh, strong enough to then uh, provide that stability. Yeah. Now, here's the thing, too. Your hands have tremendous capacity for strength. Uh, I think that there's a, a bit of a misconception that the hands are the weakest link, therefore you need wrist straps because your back is so much stronger than your, your hands. For 90% of you listening right now, that'll never happen if your hands are trained properly. You know, we, we did evolve from primates. Our hands are can, ha can be tremendously strong. Um, I've pulled my max deadlifts without wrist straps, and it, it almost never do my hands – get in the way, but it wasn't always like that. You know, when I use wrist straps and I finally took them off, uh, it took me about a year, no joke, of getting my hand, yeah, it's you a know, while. it took a while to get my hand grip and grip strength up to par to keep up with the, the rest of my body. Next question is from Mini Fig. Cold exposure therapy is said to have many health benefits. Would taking a cold shower be a good alternative to doing an ice bath? Does your body need to hit a certain temperature in order for the benefits to be activated? Cold showers are phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. It depends on what you mean by benefits. Mm -hmm. Now, a cold shower is nothing like an ice bath. An ice bath is a whole different level. Are they talking about like cold shock proteins? I know like Dr. Rhonda Patrick talks a lot about that. Yeah, this it's all heat shock proteins and cold, you know, all the, the all of the physiological things that happen with cold. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of fasting. So when you mm -hmm. look at fasting, 
we can look at all the physiological benefits, mm -hmm. but honestly, the best benefits from fasting are the psychological or spiritual benefits that you have. Yeah. Same thing with the cold, you know, therapy, whether it's cold shower or the extreme cases, ice baths. Yes, there are physiological changes that happen. Yes, your body learns to acclimate. I mean, it's like training a muscle. Your body's ability to acclimate to cold or hot is something that you can strengthen and improve. And because we're always in air-conditioned and heated rooms, we don't ever train them. But the real benefit is learning to be okay with being uncomfortable. Yeah. That's the big, big benefit. I, would, I have something to, to add to that, just based on my experience with, uh, you know, an ice bath in general, and like I really trying to mill it over and 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 understand like what I really got out of it, uh, besides all like the science and how they're explaining it and everything. Really, to me, it was access to that parasympathetic state where I I I, I can find my way to calm in uh, you know an extreme environment. So if I'm if I'm in immersed all the way in, like my natural tendency is to to squeeze and brace as hard as I can, and that restricts your breathing. And so to not be able to breathe is a problem, uh, you know, under those conditions. And to be able to calm, I could breathe normal, and my body was more resilient once I was in the calm right. state. So it was just it totally psychologically uh, benefited. I, I would challenge that though, Sal, even more than I. I don't think it's just a a, a mental like fasting where that's the main benefits. I when I started doing the the hot cold cold contrast, I noticed a significant difference in the the resiliency that I had to like the common cold. Oh yeah. I used to get sick all the time. And I know Wim Hof talks a lot about this. And this is my of course my personal experience, right? But this is what I've seen with people that I've got on it the same way too, is your ability to be able to handle the extreme changes in temperature. It's you're teaching your body to adapt to that and become very good at that. And if it's very good at that, when we head into things like winter time, your body adapts. It does it handles that. When I think when most people are susceptible to getting sick, it ain't no big deal for you. So I find that being one of the most beneficial things uh, about it. Well, then studies support that. It, you, people who do uh, ice baths or use saunas or do cold showers do get less um, infections every single year. Now, the problem with that is I've looked at the studies and they did control for all these factors, but it's really, really hard to control for the, the healthy bias factor. Right. And what I mean by that mm. is the person who spends the time to do these things also probably leads a healthier that's life. What, that, that's yeah. also why I use me as an example is that I've worked out in a gym for 20 years and been what I would say, quote unquote, a healthy person and didn't start to implement that till yeah. we all got together and like we learned about the, the benefits of hot, cold contrast training. And when I started to do it, it was, it was when we had the podcast. It was, I mean, I don't know if you remember the first year of podcasting together, I'd get sick all the time. Yeah. It was like it, my whole life I've been that way. I just assumed that, and I assumed that I was just that way as a kid. And then I assumed that, oh, I live, I work in a gym now and I'm touching weights and I'm around people all the time. That's why I just get sick all the time. After I started using the hot, cold contrast, it's, I mean, it was a dramatic difference for me and people that I've got to actually do it and be consistent regardless if they would be quote unquote considered healthy yeah. already and making good choices, notice a big difference. Well, the studies do support that. They do support that it's probably better for your immune system, better for resilience. Um, I mean, it's it's a it's it's something that people in some countries do all to the point where I believe yeah. there's there's some eastern it's ritualized. There's some eastern European countries where it's it's snow is outside and the, for recess the kids yes, they jump in the snow. They jump in the snow. Yeah. They put bathing suits on. They they uh, you know I know in. I don't know what culture is. I know it's an Eastern European culture where it's it's totally customary when you give your baby, no joke, a bath or whatever, you do a cold rinse at the end with their children. They do this with babies and with children. Oh, you wow. remember that with Kyle? Kyle's the son didn't had never even had a warm bath ever. Mm. They trained him from day one that way of nothing but you know cold water. Mm. And remember, don't you remember that the first time he took him out to the ocean and we were talking about, oh my God, it's freezing. That's NorCal oh, Ocean. That. Yeah. You don't remember that? Yeah, oh. his 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 kid. At, by the time he was three, four years old, had never even had a warm shower, a warm bath before. Wow. Yeah, he'd only had them in, in, in cold the entire time. Wow, mm. wow. There's also a study that shows that, this is a short-term uh, short effect, but if a man takes cold showers, his testosterone levels increase, I think over the course of 10 days, then they come back down to baseline. The, but you do get this initial boost in testosterone. That's another, another huge benefit that I think. I mean, do it uh, and watch how alert 
and awake oh my God, and how yeah. sharp you feel right that's afterwards. True. I mean, that's one of the, I mean, it, Tony it Robbins is big like on crazy. Yeah, Tony Robbins is big on this, right? He does the plunge and jumps on the trampoline before all his talks. That's like one of his his rituals that Better he does. Better than any nitro I've had. Oh, yeah. no, it'll wake you right up. Yeah. And and back to the original question with the shower. Showers do a great job. Yes, uh, it's it's nothing compared to cryo or an ice bath. But I tell you what, if you end uh, every morning with a, you know, the last minute to two minutes, uh, all the way cold, no warm water at all, uh, you'll see bit, you'll see a, a, mm. a big difference just from doing that alone. Next question is from Tyler McNutrition. Any tips on knowing when to push a client to do more reps and when to back off? How do I know the difference between true physical exhaustion or them mentally giving up? Well, so here's the thing when you're mm. when you're training clients, you're training both. You're training both physical strength and durability and also their mental uh, their ability to to withstand pain um, and to handle the training. And honestly, uh, it doesn't matter which which one. It, it, when I would train clients and I knew they could do more reps, but I knew that they mentally couldn't do more reps. Like I knew physically they could do more, mm -hmm. but mentally they were breaking down. That's okay. We'll stop the set. And then what I do is gradually, slowly over time, I'll challenge that. Same thing if it was a physical limit. I'll gradually uh, challenge that over time. But when you're training your clients, make no mistake, you're training the mental part as much or more than the physical part. Oh, this is we kind of addressed this not that long ago about well, where we would use the slowing down the tempo. So here's an example, like when if I'm like wondering, oh gosh, can I push my clients or add more weight or add more repetitions? What I'll do is I'll, I'll instead of risking that because obviously if I add more weight or add more volume to the workout, I'm technically could put them at risk. And if I'm concerned about that at all, I'm always going to go in the direction of slowing down the the tempo and, mm -hmm. and going that way first before giving them more in the workout, whether that be more sets and more reps or more weight, I'll challenge them that way. And you can still get the 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 mental benefits of, of pushing them through that. I think this is why this is like such a more intimate uh, experience than people realize because yeah. we're so like as trainers, the good ones really try to hone in on everything that makes this person tick in terms of their body language, uh, you know, their, their energy levels, the feedback they're giving you verbally, like you're, you're, you're picking up on all these cues constantly as you're presenting them these challenges. And so, uh, you can start to read them really well, uh, based off of like whatever they're dealing with at work or the conversation where that's going, totally. okay, they're really high stress right now. And so you just start adjusting things for them without really them having to say it. Once you get really in tune with that person. And I just think that that's, that's, that's all part of the experience of training somebody is to, uh, really look, uh, you know, further into the, the signs of, 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 mm -hmm. you know, what they're, what they're providing you. And so you got to be very present in, in those sessions with that person to, to do a good job with that, but it's experimental. So, I mean, you're going to see, <laughs> you're going to see the wincing and, you know, all these, 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 you know, the, the signs of pain and discomfort and all that. And so you kind of back off, but then you, you could tell if, if they're faking it or, 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 if, or if it's something like, you know, that you could kind of joke, you know, about and, and kind of make them more comfortable with and, and educate them on, well, let's kind of push a little harder, or, you know, or back off, or you're just going to know a lot more than them because they're providing you all the feedback. Yeah. You know, it's funny is that I just remembered this. Uh, this is a skill you develop as a trainer uh, and clients would always comment on this. In fact, my son did uh, a few weeks ago where I was training him and I'll say something like seven more reps. And you'll be like, oh, I could do way more than that. I'm like, let's stop at seven. And then he'll get to seven. He'll be like, how did you know? Yeah. How did you know I could only do seven more? That's a good point. And clients would say that to me yeah. all the time. To see whether they're moving. How do you always know that I can only do this many or how many you, reps I could do? You can tell. You can. And it's a very hard, it's hard to explain how mm -hmm. you could tell. Well, there's, there's subtle cues I can give you hints. Like, so it's natural default. What people will start to do is it gets, it starts to get challenging. They'll speed up the repetition, right? Yep. So they, they, they go, like maybe you told them, you know, oh, four seconds on the way down to, you mm -hmm. know, you're kind of, you're telling they'll them. start making more noises. Yeah, yeah, right. 
right? Or they'll start the form will deviate. You know, you start to see movement in the elbows or the shoulders, depending on what move or exercise we're doing. So you'll see them starting to, they're trying to cheat for leverage and mm -hmm. it'll be just the most subtle thing you'll see at first before it gets bad, right? But you start to see those, those subtleties of them starting to cheat or speed up. And I already know, okay, it's kicking in and feeling we've got maybe three or five more. Mm -hmm. And you've seen that enough times and you can pretty much guess that as a trainer. Yeah, yep. it's, it's, all, it's always a lot of fun to be, <laughs> to be able to do that and for clients to be like, how, how did You're you? like a magician. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm, I'm just a wizard. Oh. <laughs> Next question is from John Wilmoth. For each of you, what has been your favorite body weight and why? Your favorite Ooh. body weight. Oh, geez. When you were th th thick. Yeah. So I've my weight has been as high as 238. And I'd say, I mean, besides when I was a kid, as low as... I forgot my weight was when I got really, really shredded for MAPS Anabolic. It must have been... 182 pounds or something like that, or 180 pounds, um, which is way too, it was way too lean, way too light. Definitely didn't like that. 238, way too heavy. I feel good uh, when I'm at a, a good, lean, strong 195. That just feels the best for me. It's when my my weight feels more most comfortable. Uh, I'm typically pretty strong at that body weight. I'm lean enough to where I like the way I look. My mobility is good. Right now I'm sitting at, I don't know, 206, 207. So I'm a good 12 pounds heavier than than I would say my, my favorite body weight. Yeah, that's a that's kind of a hard question to answer because like you, Sal, I've I've gone extreme extreme both ways, and that that number fluctuates for me for uh, as light as uh, I think I hit stage for nationals at 199, and then I've been as heavy as 240, and and I could honestly say that everything between there and Probably up to two thirty. Because once I got beyond two thirty, that's too much. It was uncomfortable. Even when I was like shredded, it was uncomfortable. So between uh, two hundred and two twenty five to two thirty, I've 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 got a uh, I've been my happiest. If that like so, it just all depends on where my body fat is, my mobility is at that. I've had mm -hmm. uh, incredible strength, low body fat, good mobility, as high as two thirty ish. And then I've had the same thing all the way in the, at the very bottom. And so to pick a weight uh, that I was happiest, man, I really liked uh, my first, after my first pro show, I was 219 pounds uh, and shredded and I felt pretty amazing. I wasn't uncomfortably big. I hadn't like completely lost my mobility, uh, definitely filled out everything I was wearing. But then I, I've also been like 205 were kind of like what you're alluding to, Sal. Like I definitely felt uh, more spry. I could go play a basketball game. I feel like, like, right, when I get over 220, a lot of muscle, I don't feel like I can go hit the courts mm -hmm. without potentially hurting myself or having a rough time. So somewhere between 205 and 220, uh, I like anywhere in between there if I'm maintaining a, a good body fat percentage, lower body fat percentage and my mobility up. That's the thing too why I always tell clients, don't get so hung up on a, a body weight target because I can literally show you the most mobile, the leanest version of you at all those uh, all those body weights. So it's really a personal preference of what it what's easiest to maintain, I guess, like eating wise. Right, that's one of the hard parts for me when I'm lean and big, two twenty something. That's a lot of food I got to eat. So that's yeah. one of the drawbacks. Even though I may like the way my body looks, it's expensive and time consuming. And clothes don't fit very well. Yeah, when you're, when you're a big muscular guy, you you ain't gonna wear a normal jeans. Pants. Yeah. yeah, you're wearing sweats all Terrible. day. Terrible. That's all you're doing all day. Yeah, yeah. For me, I I base it off of like uh, what sport I was in at the time and how I felt. So I would always try to get leaner into basketball season coming off of football season. That was always tough for me because I would just start to get lean uh, towards the end of the season. And that's when I started to get my shot back and you know more athleticism and I could run up and down the court uh, you know light on my feet but initially I was just stomping around just like <laughs> slamming everybody under the hoop you know because I was just so heavy just uh, coming off of football but it helped for football because the thing was you would get pushed around and you would get punked if you were, if I was like at my uh, like two ten or even something like that, where I was like I felt like real athletic and spry, like 
uh, I would just get punked. And so I had to get up to like 2.30 to to 2.40, uh, especially when I was inside backer. I had to put on a lot more weight and I was just like not mobile. I was explosive, but not mobile. And I felt like shit. So I would say like mine's probably around 2.15 where I still feel like I I have some power, but a lot more athletic and, and, and mobile. How far are you off from that right now? Sal's 12 pounds off from what he thinks. What yeah, you, what? I, well, I'm kind of between like 227-ish, like around there. So Yeah, see, and I'm probably around, I, what I think I weighed myself the other day at 218 or so. So I'm right there, but I'm not where I, the way I like to look, right? Mm-hmm. So my body fat percentage is higher. So yeah. that's why it's so different. I can I look- uh, 10 Different di- composition. Yeah, now, I can look completely different at 218. And I've seen myself look a, a bunch of different ways. So it's, yeah, it really yeah, depends. And it's funny too, if this question was asked when I was younger, oh, I would yeah, I'd have, like, I'd have a yeah. number for you. Yeah. 240. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. 250, yeah, I, I like being 240. It feels the best. Just, yeah, huge, yeah. bro. Ma- makes my ego feel the best. But yeah, if yeah. I'm being totally honest, it does not feel the best yeah, at all. No, no. Get gassed walking up a flight of stairs. Right. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come check us out on YouTube. Also, uh, we're all on Instagram. So if you want to contact us and check out what we're doing, uh, look there. Hmm. D- Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Sal. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. And here, here's another reason why I think uh, good social relationships are, are important. Uh, I'm a better person because I know you guys than if I versus if I didn't know you guys. Now, why is that? Well, first off, uh, I want to be a better friend to people who are good friends to me. So that pushes me a little bit. You're, there's also feedback that you get from other people.